The Endurance bead filter is a great addition to your aquaponic system if you want to increase biosecurity and fish production while also decreasing the amount of maintenance you do every week. It's important when you get one of these filters from us to ensure that you follow the instructions from both us, the aquaponic source, and AST to make sure that it's configured properly for best results. When you unpack your filter from the box, make sure you follow the instructions on the diagram to tip the filter back and forth to shift the beads into the main bead chamber. After you go through the installation instructions for your aquaponic system and your bead filter, make sure you open the pressure release valve in the sump tank of your aquabundance system about two-thirds of the way to bleed off extra pressure from the water pump. At the same time, you should open the rotameter all the way as well, without the knob falling out, to have a maximum backwash cycle operating through the filter. What this does is it will backwash the beads in the filter constantly, usually every five to ten minutes, and that will help to shift the beads into the main bead chamber. During this process, you want to spend about five to seven days with the filter in a constant backwash. Again, that will move the beads where we want them into the main bead chamber. During these five to seven days, make sure you don't open the ball valve as you could lose beads through the effluent. After your initial break-in period with a continuous backwash with your filter, turn down the rotameter so the bead on the meter is sitting between 0.1 and 0.25 SCFH. This will help to set the backwash frequency at a good level, which will typically be about five to seven times per day. After you have your rotameter set, come back and check on it every 15 minutes or so for the first couple of hours. You wanna look at the bead and make sure that during this time, it doesn't fall below that 0.1 level. If it does, open the rotameter just a little bit until the bead goes up to that higher level above 0.1. When it comes time to discharge sludge from your filter, there's a very simple yet specific set of instructions you should follow. Depending on the amount of fish food you're putting in your tank every day, that will impact the frequency that you have to discharge solids from your filter. The Endurance 2000 bead filter has a maximum capacity of about one pound of fish food per day. For light feeding, which I classify as anything less than about a quarter pound of fish food per day, you should open your sludge drain about every two to three days. For heavier feeding, or above a quarter pound of fish food per day, you should open your sludge drain every single day. The best time to discharge solids from your bead filter is just after a backwash, or maybe about a minute after. Listen for the air escaping through the filter so you know a backwash had just occurred. Also, you can tell a backwash is about to happen by inspecting your trigger pipe. This clear pipe here will show a small bubble forming, which will work its way down to the elbow at the base of the filter. Once the air enters the elbow, a backwash will occur. The reason that we wait for a backwash to occur before opening the valve is that if a filter is full of air, as in it's about to backwash, it pushes any beads that may be in the air chamber closer to the sludge discharge. That means when you open the valve, you could blow beads out of it. So again, the best time to do it is to wait until you hear a backwash to occur. Another way to do it is to temporarily open up your rotameter so air is going in at a faster rate. You can force a backwash to quickly happen and then dial it back to where it was before. When you discharge solids, put a bucket underneath your drain, turn the valve, and let the solids come out. You should see a thicker black sludge followed by clear water. Try to run it until you see this clear water come out of the filter. However, you should really never discharge more than two gallons at a time. Also, if you ever see beads coming out with that waste from your filter, immediately close off the ball valve and save those beads for later. Now that you have your filter set up and running, let's run through a few common scenarios and questions that we receive about these filters and teach you how to fine tune it for optimal results. First, a very common thing that we hear about these filters is that they're not backwashing for people. 
or there's water flowing through it, but the air is not causing a backwash to occur. This can be caused by a few different things with the filter, but it's easily addressed. The first step to fixing a filter that isn't backwashing is to inspect your rotometer. Look at the bead on the meter. Make sure that it's somewhere between 0.1 and 0.25. If it's sitting all the way at the bottom, that means that there's no air entering the filter and a backwash isn't going to happen. The first step to take is to turn your rotometer counterclockwise to open it up further to allow more air to come in. After that, if that doesn't change the location of that bead in the meter, check your air pump. Make sure the air pump is turned up all the way to its maximum setting, so we know as much air as possible is entering the filter. At that point, if still no air is going into the filter, that's a sign that there's too much water pressure going into the filter. Think of it as if the water pump and the air pump have to work together to pump both of those fluids into the filter at the same time. If there's too much water going into the filter, it can overpower the air pump and prevent air from initiating that backwash cycle. What you should do is go to your sump tank and open up the pressure release valve after your water pump about two thirds to maybe three quarters of the way. This will bleed off extra pressure from your pump back into the sump tank and will make it a little bit easier for your air pump to pump air into the endurance filter which will help it to initiate a backwash. Another common issue we hear about people operating these filters is that beads sometimes come out when you discharge solids. The first thing to do when you're discharging solids from your filter is to wait until after a backwash has occurred. This gives you the best chance of only removing solids and water from your filter and not plastic filtration beads. Wait for that backwash to occur and maybe wait for another 30 seconds to a minute for additional solids to settle out into the bottom of the sludge chamber before opening the valve. If beads do come out of your filter, don't panic. Use a fine fishnet to strain out those beads and save them for later. When you have a sizable amount of beads saved up, which I classify as several cups worth, you can add them back into your filter very easily. To do this, First, unplug your water pump and air pump that powers the endurance filter. Make sure those are completely off and not pressurized anymore. Next, open your sludge drain and drain out a couple gallons of water into a bucket. This will help decrease the overall water level in your filter. Then, undo the cap at the top of the filter. Unscrew it all the way and you'll be able to look right down into the main bead filtration chamber. Use a funnel and dump those beads back into the chamber. Re-Teflon thread tape your plug and secure it back on the top of your filter. Plug your pumps in and make sure that your rotometer and water is flowing like it was before you turned everything off. Another common issue that we hear about people having with their aquaponic systems is sometimes their fish aren't eating or they're slow or lethargic. This can often be a sign of poor water quality in your aquaponic system. The first step to take if you're having issues with your fish is to do a full water test using your API Freshwater Master Test Kit. Test your ammonia, nitrite, nitrate levels, and your pH. Keep track of your water temperature too. If any of the levels exceed acceptable ranges, you should probably think about doing a water change in your system. We classify acceptable water quality levels for aquaponic systems to be about three parts per million or less of ammonia, one part per million or less of nitrite, and a good range for your pH is somewhere between 6.8 to 7.2, although this could vary depending on your fish species. If you have elevated ammonia or nitrite levels, you should probably consider doing a water change. To do this, drain out about one quarter to one third of the total volume of your system. Replace that water with dechlorinated fresh water from a good water source. If you can, make sure that water temperature is as close to the original temperature in your aquaponic system so you don't shock your fish in the process. 
Another reason that you might be experiencing poor fish health and bad water quality is that you're not discharging from your endurance filter enough. It's important to empty the sludge drain every day to every two or three days depending on the amount of fish food you're adding to the system. If you let solids build up for too long, it can cause elevated nitrite and ammonia levels, which can be toxic to your fish. For good water quality, make sure you're discharging your solids on a regular basis. Also, you should be making sure that the filter is always backwashing, or at least backwashing at a regular interval. Make it part of your daily maintenance when you come into your greenhouse or aquaponics room to take a look at your filter and check out the rotameter. Make sure that the bead is above that zero mark. That will tell you that air is entering the filter and a backwash will occur. All of these are really good steps to take to make sure that your filter is working properly and your fish are going to have that best chance for success. Another thing that we commonly hear with these filters is that even though you're using a great bead filter, the water in your system is still pretty cloudy. The reason for this is often tied to the backwash cycle. Believe it or not, the more you backwash the filter in terms of the frequency that that backwash occurs, the cloudier the water will be. The beads screen out the most amount of suspended solids when they're a little bit gummed up with bacteria, and solids from your system. Every time you backwash, remember, you're scrubbing those beads clean and collecting those solids for later. While this is something that definitely has to happen for proper operation of your filter, you don't want to backwash too frequently because it can stir up solids in the filter and in your fish tank and cause cloudy water to occur. Again, to ensure the best clarity water, make sure that your rotameter is set at that 0.1 to 0.25 mark going forward. Also, when you feed your fish, make sure you're only feeding as much as they can eat in about five minutes. After that, or when the fish are done eating, scoop out any uneaten food. It's really important that you don't leave uneaten food in the fish tank, as this will settle to the bottom and then get taken up by the filter. Uneaten fish food gets processed in a filter differently than fish poop. Because of this, it can lead to clogs and other water quality issues in your system. Remember, always scoop out uneaten food from your fish tank.